Hello, Grumpy Old Fart here. Um, <laughs> if you'll notice my new uh, backdrop here, thank you, my wife. She is freaking awesome. Okay, uh, she got the back new backdrop for me because it, it more fits the motif of my of my stuff here. And I am as pro America as they get. So if you're not, too bad. All right. <clears throat> um, thanks again to the wife. Love the hell out of her. She's awesome. Now, um. One of the things that I rail against is big government. Uh, we, we do not need a police state, nor do we want one. I have some other videos out there, <coughs> excuse me, titled uh, Leftist Police State. And I do one on Roger Stone. I did one on Donald Trump. And I did one on the, the Bundy Ranch the, uh, uh, standoff, as it were. And... Uh, those were all leftists con contrived and conceived and uh, enacted. However, there were there was a couple of them before that that were uh, I can't really call them leftists because they happened under well, at least well, at least this one. I'm gonna do some more research on the other ones, but this one happened under the Bush administration. All right, so technically it's not a leftist uh, situation. However. There's something you have to understand. Uh, during Iran-Contra, George Bush Sr. and Bill Clinton were business partners on, in the Iran-Contra situation on the MENA Airport, Arkansas end of it. So the drugs were coming in, and, and the, we know Bush was involved because there was a smuggler had his personal phone number. And we know Clinton was involved because they came in at the MENA Airport in Arkansas. So, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't they weren't, you know, it, there's no question about that. What we're going to talk about now is Ruby Ridge. Ruby Ridge happened in August of 1992 under the Bush administration, like I said. So, again, I'm not blaming this specifically on lefties, but George Bush may as well be a lefty because he's that dirty. Uh, <clears throat> a little bit of context here. I'm going to go into what the media told you and then... But first, before I do that, let me give you a little bit of context here. Uh, Randy Weaver and his family lived in Iowa, and they didn't like the way society was moving. They they were religious people. Uh, they were like hardcore religious people. They weren't they weren't like you know fanatics or nothing. But they 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 didn't like the way society was going, and they didn't want their kids being raised in that environment. So they moved to a remote place in Idaho, northern Idaho. Got them 20 acres, built them a little cabin, you know, just a few amenities, nothing major. And they just wanted to be left alone. That was it. Um, they were homeschooling their kids. They had the son, the wife, and some kids out there. And, you know, they, they, were, they were just doing their thing. What American doesn't want to be left alone? Well, they made it happen. Randy Weaver is a, a, a veteran, military veteran. And he took his family out there. He was teaching them how to survive off the land and, and this and that. Um, he was he he was not he's not a bad person. Okay, he he wasn't he wasn't plotting the overthrow or plotting violence or anything like that. Like I said, they just wanted to be left alone. Now, uh, the media painted him as a white supremacist, and that may have been due to, uh, at least in some degree to what the government was telling them the media, the press releases and things like that. However, <clears throat> none of that's true either. Let me let me explain. No, no, no. Randy Weaver, they like I said, they live in a very remote area, very few neighbors. So these neighbors invited him to a meeting, a little group get together. He didn't know it at the time when he first start, when he first started going. Uh, this was from the Christian it was a Christian identity group. And it was a, apparently this group is a fringe group of the Aryan nation. Uh, <clears throat> this was, this was Randy Weaver's mistake. He didn't stop going. He went apparently multiple times. But again, there's no evidence to say he was a, a soldier for the Aryan nation. There's no evidence to say he was a hardcore white supremacist. <clears throat> Excuse me. His neighbors showed up. They were going and, you know, to be friendly, he went. That's, that's my understanding of it. Uh, 
I think maybe if you show up at a, at a meeting, you don't know who, what all's going on, and they're hanging a white power sign, yeah, it's time to go. <laughs> you don't want to hang out with those people. There's, you know, I'm not a fan of the Aryan Nation. I believe everybody bleeds red for a reason. I believe that uh, we're all human. That's basically what it boils down to. Just they ran out of one color paint and started painting something else. It's aesthetics. This, this white coloring here, it's aesthetic. It means nothing. That's that's my belief. If I had if I if I were in Randy Weaver's position and I showed up at a, at a meeting and they started flashing white power and blah 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 blah, especially if they started you know flashing Nazi signs of the swastika and all that crap, I'd have been out of there quick in a heartbeat, you know. But they apparently. This group, like I said, is a fringe group. It's, now, keep in mind, this this group, there's nothing illegal about it. They weren't doing anything wrong. They weren't breaking the law in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Now, <clears throat> the uh, where the government was keeping an eye on this group, and probably rightly so, just to be on the safe side. But, like I said, this, this group is perfectly legal. There's nothing wrong with being a member of this group. This group wasn't actually plotting, you know, to do bad things it's the thinking something is not a crime when it when it when thinking something becomes a crime there we're gonna have a hell of a lot of criminals it's when you actually do something and this group apparently wasn't planning on doing anything bad they were just you know they were doing a thing i i don't agree with their thing but they were doing it at any rate at this group there was an undercover uh, government agent. Uh, I've, I've heard he was FBI or ATF. I'm not sure which, but he was there, and he was making friends with people and trying to, you know, get, get information on them because he was an undercover agent. Well, apparently he met Randy Weaver and immediately started trying to pressure him to purchase a couple of shotguns. Well, um, Randy Weaver said, "No, no, I want to keep my guns. I'm good, you know." <clears throat> so this guy made friends with Randy Weaver and kept pressuring him. To purchase, well, crap. Purchase these shotguns, and I done messed that one up. Oh, crap, figures. All right, there we go. Anyway, so uh, over time and lots of pressure involved. You know, hey, I really want those shotguns. Blah, 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 over and over and over. You know, finally, Randy says, "Okay, fine, I'll sell you the shotguns." And the guy says, "Well, uh, hey." Uh, I don't have the tools to cut these off like I want. Can you cut them for me? And Randy said, well, yeah, I guess. But uh, I, don't, I, I don't know what the legal limit is. I don't know what where to cut. And the guy says, oh, I know all the law. Don't worry about it. I'll show you right where to cut. And so he, he had the shotgun barrel was here. And he points. says, this is right here. It's where you cut. Right there. And so Randy said, okay. He cut them. Weapons violations. Yes, they, the federal agent said, I got you. Weapons violations. You sold me an illegal shotgun. Yeah, they have a word for that in legal terms. It's called entrapment. It's illegal. The cops can't do that to you. Well, they tried to do it to Randy Weaver. And this cop said, we're going to bring you in. You're going to work for us. You're going to, you know, we're going to report on the, the what's happening in this group. Or we're going to throw you in jail. And Randy said, the hell you are. I'm not going to do that shit. And so he went off back to his house. And so they arrested him and brought him in. And they said, uh, you know, he, he, they posted bail or whatever, and he's out of jail. And they sent him a summons to be in court for his hearing. Well, on the summons, on the piece of paper, the summons that they sent him, they had the wrong date. They said it was like the 14th. And, uh, uh, or no, they said, excuse me, they said it was the 20th. And the, uh, I want to say it was on actually on the 14th. So come the 14th, he didn't show up. Duh, they gave him the wrong date. Well, rather than go out and knock on his door and say, hey, you know, you didn't show up. What's the deal? You know, oh, well, you sent me the wrong date. Oh, no problem. Well, here's where you got to come on in, blah, blah, blah. You know, they could have done that. That would have been the end of it. Okay. That's not what happened. <clears throat> they should have warrant an indictment for failure to appear. And even as, as crappy a little indictment as that is, they, uh, <laughs> they, they, they went all out on this guy. They, they, Instead of going out to his door, they, they put uh, surreptitiously put cameras all over his property because he had a very uh, he had 20 acres, all of it wooded, and they're putting cameras out there on his property, on his property to uh, to view their comings and goings, and they've got groups of armed ATF and federal agents, whatever, 
you know, moving through his property without his permission. Okay. And so, uh, over, over a period of time, they were, they were surveilling him. Well, eventually, the, the, okay, the, the, the Randy Weaver's kid, he's like uh, between 10 and 14 in that range, and a friend of theirs heard the dog barking, the family dog. And they're like, cool, so, you know, an animal, because we, we need meat, we're going we're gonna to grab our guns and go see. So they, they went out to see. Turns out the dog was barking at a group of these camo, these federal agents dressed in camouflage, and they're heavily armed, and they're, they're hiding on the property, and the dog's barking at them. So the, the, the two of them go out there, and they see the, the guys on the property, and they go, hey, wh what's going on? And so the federal agent, blam, shoots the dog. The kid seeing this federal agent who he doesn't know who he is who hasn't identified himself shoot the family dog this kid shoots back a couple times and misses another federal agent shoots and kills the kid so at this point the, the dog's dead and the kid's dead okay long story short there's a there's a siege it lasts for quite a while about several weeks at least about a week at least you know a week to 10 days or two weeks something like that anyway the point is over the course of this time, Randy Weaver's going out to the shed to check on his kid who's laying out there dead. And somebody takes a shot at him and misses him and shoots his wife in the head. The stray shot hits his wife in the head, right in the face, and kills her while she's holding their baby. So, at this point, you know, being a little bit paranoid, not like me, but, you know, a little bit paranoid. Randy Weaver thinks that the government's actually trying to kill him, which, in point of fact, at that point, what would you think? You know? So he's holed up in his house. He's wounded. He's, he's you know, he's got kids in there. The other guy in there is wounded as well. And long story short, uh, somebody else goes out there and brokers a peace and says, you got to come out and deal with this. So they blah, 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 blah. And he, the, the Randy Weaver finally comes out. <clears throat> so they go to trial. At trial... Randy Weaver is almost virtually completely exonerated. They got him on two minor charges. One of them was the failure to appear. Okay? So, yeah. He, the, the, the prosecution's case was so flimsy, so flimsy, that the uh, the defense attorney, after the, after the prosecution was done, the defense attorney stood up and said, there you go, Your Honor, we rest our case. And he sat back down. The judge actually said 80% of the prosecution's evidence supported the defense. That's how bad their case was. Okay. It was even worse than the case they got against President Trump now. Yeah, it might have been. Along those lines, anyway. But the point I'm getting at is, uh, Weaver walked away scot-free. And here's the kicker. So did the FBI agents. Nobody went to jail for that. Nobody. They settled out of court for several million dollars, but the point is, nobody went to jail for that. Not one federal agent, any of them, went to jail. They murdered his wife while she was holding their baby. They murdered his son on their property. And nobody went to jail. Nobody. That's the federal government. That's big government. This is a case in point of big government. This was under a Republican president. So it's not technically not leftist. But it may as well be because... Uh, but like I said, Bush and Clinton are they're tight. They're 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 like that. So I'm just saying. There's a couple of videos out there you need to watch if you really get if you're interested in this. If this has piqued your interest, uh, one of them is Ruby Ridge: Anatomy of a Tragedy, and one of them is uh, Glenn Beck: The Blaze. He has a series of little videos that he's put together. They do good research. Um. Again, I don't want a police state. I don't care who's in who's in charge. Okay, big government breeds a police state, and a police state is something nobody wants. Nobody in their in their right mind wants a police state, unless you're in charge of it, because then you get all the perks. Say, but a police state doesn't do anyone any good. Period. Um, this speaks to our fundamental freedoms: gun control, freedom of religion, the freedom to own land. I mean, it goes, if you go virtually, you know, uh, the Fourth Amendment invasion of privacy, the whole nine yards, they had cameras on his property for no reason. My point is, if you go down the Bill of Rights, they pretty well violated all of them. 
I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Or if they didn't violate all of them, they got they got quite a bit of them, most of them at least. Um, so yeah, uh, I I am not a fan of the police state, no matter who's in charge of it, because chances are it won't be us. Uh, and if anybody, you know, please feel free to put comments down here. Uh, mention if you like my uh, my new my new backdrop here, because my wife will like that. Uh, at any rate. It, the, again, the media painted this guy as a white supremacist, and it, it wasn't, it was not so at all. Uh, he hung out with some people that he knew. That was basically it. And, you know, they, they may very well have been white, white supremacists. I don't know. But Randy Weaver was not. And they, they, they tried to railroad him big time. This is a police state. This is exactly what I'm talking about. You folks have a good day. God bless one and all.